It's the beginning of irrigation season in southern New Mexico. Elephant Butte Irrigation District consultant Phil King is coordinating the delivery of water to farmers down the Rio Grande. Yesterday morning we made the initial release into the river from the reservoir and so that water is working its way down now. Once released, the surge of water snakes its way south towards Mexico, soaking the dry riverbed on its way to irrigation farmers and municipal users in Hatch, the Mesilla Valley, El Paso, Texas and Juarez, Mexico. It's the beginning of this year's surface water irrigation system season and uh, it is both in a, a very uh, important part of our economy but also our culture. This, this whole valley was settled by irrigated farmers and uh, uh, they, they continue to be a major part of the, the culture and the economy to this day. Every inch of water that flows down the Rio Grande belongs to someone, but seepage from the river and irrigation farming into the ground is the main source of aquifer recharge, and most New Mexicans get their drinking water from the ground. The river is the primary source of recharge, probably better than 95% of the recharge to the aquifer system here, the groundwater system. And the groundwater system is what provides all of the drinking water for the city of Las Cruces, Hatch, uh, all the way down Anthony, La Mesa, uh, Sunland Park, Santa Teresa. It's all the groundwater system that those municipalities rely on. And that groundwater originates from the Rio Grande itself. While water allocations are projected to be higher than at any point since 2010, without ramped up monitoring, coordinated management and water infrastructure projects, the regional long-term supply isn't necessarily any better off. That's according to New Mexico Water Resources Research Institute Director Sam Fernald. He specialises in river-to-ground water recharge and hydrology. And the problem isn't new. Fennell lamented on the situation in our 2015 documentary, Our Water Future. On the southwest, we live in a state of constant scarcity because our demand is always pushing up or exceeding our supply. According to the annual American Infrastructure Report card released by the Society of Civil Engineers, New Mexico already needs an estimated $1.1 billion in water infrastructure improvements over the next 20 years. Current funding levels are not sufficient. President Donald Trump's budget proposal could put needed improvements further out of financial reach, with a proposed elimination of the Water and Environment Program, or WEP, WEP offers financing for water projects in communities with populations under 10,000 people. King says Las Cruces has comparable infrastructure and groundwater management challenges. But because they are better equipped to adapt and finance solutions, residents often don't experience water scarcity. In the cities, they uh, unfortunately, they seem to have the attitude that water comes from the tap and food comes from the supermarket. They don't really tie the, the uh, resource that they're consuming to its original synthesis. Las Cruces recently released a long-term city water plan. King says city growth and regional industrial development threaten a limited water supply. That's because 87% of water is used in the irrigation of agricultural crops. So a lot of, a lot of the, the work that I do in terms of research is trying to figure out how to manage water to support the, the demands as best we can, but also to find what level of demand can actually be supported. According to a 2017 Union of Concerned Scientists report, New Mexico is the sixth fastest warming state in the nation. The threat to an already scarce water supply is real, and one King says our region needs to prepare for, especially in agriculture. So you see a lot of high water use crops, permanent crops like pecans going in that assume that they're always going to have that full supply. No, we don't. Starting in 2003, we kind of got a, a rude slap back to reality and we've been it, basically in recurring drought every year. We've had a, you know, a wet year here and there. This one coming down now may be you know, a, a wet year interspersed amongst a bunch of dry ones. But we, we clearly have to rethink the way we manage our water.
A 2013 Bureau of Reclamation Analysis found that the Rio Grande could lose 30% of its water flow by the end of the century. Though agriculture uses most of the region's water supply, farmers won't be the first to be impacted by water scarcity. The United Nations says the burden of rising temperatures will disproportionately impact the poor and those in rural communities. For KRWG, I'm Simon Thompson.